is a celebration for the gaming industry as a whole. You've got the biggest companies showing off what's going to be next from them in the industry, and possibly a new system. E3 has always been a special time of year for me, because as a consumer, I'm excited to see what my favorite companies are putting out, and if they're updating anything that's already been released. And 9 times out of 10, I always find a game that I want to try after the E3 conferences, so it's a great chance to just get out there and see what's happening. So, this E3 video is going to be a little bit different from the other ones you've probably watched on YouTube, because let's face it, we're subscribed to at least 10 Nintendo YouTubers. I know I am. This video is actually going to have a receipt right over here. Now, you're probably wondering why that's there. Well, for every game that I talk about, I'm going to add it to the receipt, and at the end of the video, we're going to see how much it would cost to buy all the games I'm excited for at E3. So, you got that to look forward to at the end. The price may or may not surprise you. And so will the games I'll be talking about, so let's... Let's a go. Wait, then why did I do a Mario when I'm doing an Xbox? I go to the, the first conference. Hot! Okay, so Cyberpunk 2077, I think it's safe to say that it was one of the biggest titles at the Xbox press conference this year and last year. It's just a huge title that not many people know a lot about. We do know that it's all Cyberpunk themed, hence the title, and... I'm pretty sure it takes place in the year 2077, because why else would that number be there? But, yeah, Cyberpunk 2077, in a word, is... Breathtaking. Yes, breathtaking. But, I mean, come on, Keanu Reeves wasn't wrong. <laughs> Have you seen this game? This looks amazing. While I don't know too much about it, and I don't have an Xbox One X, I look forward to playing this on my PC. Or, I guess, laptop. Same difference, it runs Windows 10. It works. But I can't wait to play this game for not just the appearance of Keanu Reeves, but I can't wait to see what this game actually has in store, because Xbox has been very low-key about it and barely showing any gameplay from what I've seen, so I'm excited to see what uh, results out of all this. The next game I'm excited for may or may not be interesting to most of you. You see, as a kid, I loved Legos. I, I would always build them, they would always be so much fun. It took me like 12 years to build a Lego Hogwarts. I still remember that. But, more importantly, I love Lego video games. I started off with Lego Harry Potter on the Wii, and I just fell in love with Lego games as a whole, just the way that they worked. When Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga was announced, you could tell I was a little bit excited, because as someone who played the original 6 on the Complete Saga for the Xbox 360, I've been wanting to have every single one in one game, and I'm really happy to see that this is actually happening in 2020, no less. And it is kind of strange that they're announcing this now, when we've known about Episode 9 releasing in December for like... a year or two? A few? Quite a few years, actually. And it really took me by surprise that they didn't release a game about the 8th movie, considering we got one for The Force Awakens. But nonetheless, I'm excited to catch up on Star Wars, and see what the rest has in store for me, LEGO-wise. Borderlands is a series that I've heard of time and time again. Although, I've never really played the games, even though I do have a 360, and I'm pretty sure most of the Borderlands games are on that anyway. However, when Borderlands 3 was revealed at PAX East 2019, I was not there for the reveal, but I was there later, I was blown away because, I mean, come on, how often is it that a game developer remembers the number 3? This is huge! Oh, okay, I guess Kingdom Hearts 3 exists, but uh, that's besides the point. Borderlands is a series I've wanted to get into forever, and what better time than right now since the third game is on the way? So I figured I can catch up on the series, or at least the lore, and then dive into the third game when it releases this year. Alright, our next conference is gonna be Bethesda. Okay, yeah! hey, uh, settle down there, guy. Oh gosh. Yes, Bethesda. Despite that one obnoxious person in the audience, I thought it was an okay conference. We're going to start off with Ghostwire Tokyo. 
I don't know what this is, but I fell in love with it instantly. I didn't know I needed this game until I saw that trailer of everyone disappearing Thanos style. Well, okay, I guess they still have their clothes, but they're all left in the mall. Who's gonna clean up all that? The janitor? No. He disappeared too. Everyone's dead. Anyway, I'm excited to see what Ghostwire has in store for us. Mostly because we don't know what Ghostwire really is. We know that a lot of people end up disappearing for some reason. We don't know why. We don't know how we're going to save the world or what we're even saving the world from. So I'm really thrilled to see where this game is going to go. Hopefully we get more gameplay soon. Yes, I've heard of Doom's legacy in the gaming industry, pioneering the first-person shooter genre. So when I saw Doom Eternal take over Bethesda's conference, let's just say I was a little bit blown away. Although, as violent as it is, I think it's going to be interesting because it sort of looks like one of those, I guess, hack and slash, but mostly hack and shoot and shoot and shoot some more. And, you know... Sometimes we need those games in our lives, getting out all of our frustration when our psychiatrists can't help us. But for real though, I really do like the look of Doom, Doom Eternal, and I think it's a great return to the pre-existing Doom series, and it's still carrying on the legacy that I left behind. Okay, we're gonna get through this one pretty fast, because I know most people don't like this game, but Fallout 76... Yes, we all know it's terrible. The people at Bethesda that were doing the conference knew it was terrible. However, the updates look promising. I mean, don't shoot the messenger. I just think that the updates look interesting. Uh, thank God we didn't get any crazy modes released during the conference. There can only be one overseer. Good luck. Well, crap. Yes, a Battle Royale mode in Fallout 76. I asked for this? No. You asked for this? No. Did anybody? Maybe a staff member that was drunk? But seriously though, I really don't understand what kind of significance a Battle Royale mode would have in a game like Fallout. Because the point of Fallout is you get as many people together as possible to survive the apocalypse. So why would you do a battle royale where you all kill each other? I know it's just a separate mode, it probably has nothing to do with the story, but it is a bit weird, and it definitely was strange to see that kind of trailer on screen, only for them to say, yup, 52 player battle royale. It just really took me by surprise, so I can't wait to see what the reaction of that is gonna be. Elder Scrolls 6. That's the biggest thing that people remember from last year's E3. Everybody was so excited that they would finally move on from Skyrim. We got a trailer, and that was about it. And then this year? Nothing. Yeah, the lack of Elder Scrolls 6 news definitely was disappointing. I would have preferred if they did maybe a 10 second clip of the game again, like they did last year. That would at least show that they're acknowledging it and putting work into it. I'm sure that plenty of developers are currently working on at the moment, but still, just to have a small message from Bethesda would kind of reassure that. So, last but not least, Commander Keen. It's a thing. But why, though? Especially on mobile. Yeah, I agree with everybody who was like, What? When Commander Keen was announced at the Bethesda press conference. In fact, here's my reaction in case you weren't around for the stream. Imagine. A classic Saturday morning cartoon in free-to-play mobile game form. Let's take a look. Yes. Yeah. Come in. 
That's a thing. I'm not sure how to feel about that. So yeah, let's just say I didn't take the news very well. <laughs> I've never heard of Commander Keen, personally, aside from this conference, and to see this kind of treatment of a franchise, just throwing him onto mobile, it's like, why? Why even bother if almost nobody remembers the series? I'm sure there are plenty of Commander Keen fanboys out there that would probably burn me at the stake, but... Look, this is all my opinion. I've never heard of it, I don't know why it was announced, it came out of the blue, and I just... There's no easy way to say this, but I just don't really understand why it exists. Now for the conference that I was the most excited for, because, let's face it, I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Can't you tell by this background right here? We got, you got your warp pipes, question mark blocks with my face on it for some reason, and... Even signs from previous collaborations with the company. Don't ask me how I got that, I will not tell you any of my secrets. But really, Nintendo's E3 conference was just as interesting as last year. They manage to keep things fresh, they always have you on the edge of your seat, and they throw in some titles that you don't really expect. So, we started off with a Smash Bros. character, because of course we did. But the hero from Dragon Quest XI is in Smash now. Now, most of us were probably just like, oh, Dragon Quest. Because everybody was expecting Erdrick. And to see the hero, we were all kind of just standing there with a bunch of question marks over our heads. But, I mean... Any character is a good character in my eyes, as long as it's not Waluigi. Yes, I'm on the anti-Waluigi squad, don't kill me. But to see the hero from Dragon Quest added to Smash, it was interesting. I do want to get into Dragon Quest, so I guess this could be an interesting intro, especially since right after they announced Dragon Quest XI Definitive Edition S something. I don't know, these titles are like Kingdom Hearts level of complicated. But, nonetheless, I want to give Dragon Quest a try after seeing that trailer, so... Congrats! Your Smash reveal directed me to something completely different. Luigi's Mansion 3. I really like the look of this game, and it's more than just... Oh, look at the graphics! No, I, I think that the gameplay looks simple enough. It's the same as other Luigi's Mansion games, I wasn't really expecting anything different. But the aesthetic of a hotel kinda gives a callback to the original Luigi's Mansion, which was in a giant mansion. Can't you tell by the title? <laughs> but after seeing some gameplay of Luigi's Mansion 3 during the Nintendo Treehouse Live segments, I knew that I would have to pick up this game because the ghosts look interesting, This the uh, new Poltergust looks like... A fun concept, especially with the new Gooigi feature, who's weak to all the elements and is practically useless except for going through cracks and walls or something. But aside from all that, I just think that it's a great return to form for the series, and I really can't wait to just pick up this game and play. A big discrepancy that people had with the second game was that it wasn't free. You see, with the first game, with the giant mansion, you would just walk around wherever you wanted and explore yourself. But with Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, it felt a lot more restricted because it was all mission-based and you were kind of limited to where your mission objective would take you and you'd be in multiple mansions, which didn't really do the series justice. But I think this is, again, a true return to form and... Just the idea of multiple hotel floors, each having a different theme, that just paves the way for creativity, and I can't wait to see what they come up with. Okay, so Pokemon Sword and Shield, we didn't really get much information about it. However, I am excited that they announced the Water Gym Leader, because if you watch my analysis on Twitch, or it's on my YouTube right now, you would know that we discovered that there are four other arenas that they didn't announce in the Pokemon Direct earlier this month. So to show that the Water Arena, the same one that we managed to discover by looking at the map of the Galar region, was revealed, you could tell I was all like, Ah, that's a thing that I found! Nonetheless, I'm still excited for this game, despite people complaining about the whole National Dex controversy. 
And I can understand that there wasn't too much news about the games because, again, we just had a Pokemon Direct earlier this month, so I wasn't expecting much news in the first place. But when I heard about the Pokeball Plus functionality and how you could take a Pokemon out for a walk with you and something good will happen if you do, I was intrigued. Although, that's not going to convince me to buy a Pokeball Plus because, I mean, I barely walk. I'm a gamer. We all sit in our basements, apparently. And for those trying to figure out which version I'm going to get, I'm getting Pokemon Sword. So if you guys want to say, ha ha, I got the opposite version, go ahead, buy Pokemon Shield. Either way, you're doing Game Freak a favor. So I already gushed about how Link's Awakening looks amazing in a different video or stream. But, I mean, come on. The claymation, just all the stuff that we saw, it just looks so good. I just, uh, it looks amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry, all I can really think about are the looks of the game, but when you think about it, that's really the focal point of Link's Awakening. Because it came out of a Game Boy and put onto the Switch in a different format altogether. Although, I don't understand why this game is $60 exactly, as I thought it was comparatively smaller than other Zelda games, but I'm not complaining. Although there's probably going to be a sale for it at some point where it goes down to like 40 or a price that I would think would be reasonable for a title this small. But if you want to see a cool Let's Play of the original Link's Awakening by my favorite Let's Player, Chugga Conroy, click the eye icon right up here and that'll take you to his first episode. The amount of representation that we're getting from other companies is incredible on the Switch. We already have like hundreds of titles from other publishers and developers on the Switch already. But when I heard that The Witcher 3 and Resident Evil 5 and 6 are going to be on the Switch, that blew me away. Especially since people were saying, oh, The Witcher 3, HD, 1080p, it looks amazing. And then you throw it on the Switch, which is 720p, 60fps. Well, okay, 720p, 30fps. You start to think, at this point, are they just doing it to make the Switch look like something that can play everything? That's what I thought, but... If you're a fan of The Witcher or the Resident Evil series, then who am I to say what you can and can't play your games on? Astral Chain looks epic still. I just, ugh, I can't wait to play this game, even though I don't really know much about it. Just the sheer atmosphere, the graphics, I mean, it is Platinum Games. They definitely know what they're doing, and I can't wait to see where this goes. I don't know if there was gameplay showed at the Nintendo Treehouse Live event. I'll put text here if I was wrong, because editor always knows that I'm correct. But if there is, boy am I going to watch it, because I want to get into this game as soon as possible. Wait, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games is still a thing? Okay. So, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I was originally a bit intrigued at the idea of this game even though they didn't really go into detail about it. Although, what's unfortunate is that the same thing happened here. We got cutscenes galore, but we didn't really see much gameplay or anything, not even during Nintendo Treehouse Live. So, it is kind of sad to not hear anything, but, you know, if you're a Fire Emblem fan, who am I to tell you what information you do and don't need? I just think that it's a bit weird that they haven't shown anything, because... It comes out in a month. You would think that the game would be finalized to show off. That's just my opinion, though. Banjo-Kazooie. Oh boy, <laughs> this is an interesting one for me. You see, I never really played Banjo as a kid because I was born after the Nintendo 64's lifespan. Well, shortly before the lifespan. Anyway, I didn't really play the Banjo-Kazooie games, but I always wanted him in Smash because I thought... It would be a good fit. And we've been wanting Banjo since Melee, around when the acquisition from Microsoft happened, and we didn't see him in Smash 4 despite the ballot, but to see Banjo get revealed for Smash Ultimate this time around was just... Wow. To give you an idea of how excited I was for Banjo and Smash, allow me to play my reaction. That's DK again. Ah! <laughs> K rules in their house now. I know I did not just see that.
Come on! That's actually Spiral Mountain Stage! Oh my god! Benjo and Kazooie! It's happening! They actually did it! Oh my god! I'm at a loss for words. Fall! Aha, okay, yeah, brain cells totally depleting. Anyway, yeah, I never really played the Banjo games as a kid, but I've been wanting him in Smash because I thought he would be a good fit. So to see this finally happen was just amazing. I can't wait to play Banjo. I might become a Banjo main for all I know. <laughs> the last announcement that Nintendo gave us for E3 was Breath of the Wild 2. As excited I was for this game as you can tell by this clip. DLC? Expansion pack? No way! Are you actually- Really? A sequel? Right now? I think they should not have announced it. Now hold on, hold on, put your pitchforks down. I have reasoning. You see, let me just talk about the first Breath of the Wild for a second. It was teased in Nintendo Direct in January of 2013, and yes I do have the timeline right here on my other monitor. It was teased in Nintendo Direct in 2013, but in-game footage wasn't shown until E3 2014, and it was planned for a 2015 release at the time. However, it was delayed early 2015 because I guess the scope of the game was too big at the moment. There was a playable demo for the Wii U version at E3 2016 where the name Breath of the Wild was finally announced, and then it was finally announced for release on the Nintendo Wii U and the newly unveiled Nintendo Switch in January 2017 when they actually talked about the system and introduced it to the world. You see, the reason why I mentioned the timeline of information about Breath of the Wild is because you started in January 2013, and we didn't really know what the game really was until January 2017. Four years to get information, and development presumably started around 2013, maybe even 2011 after Skyward Sword. So, if you count 2011, that means it was six whole years to get this game underway. So when I saw the reveal of Breath of the Wild 2, after the dust settled in terms of hype for me, I was thinking, why did they reveal it now? You see, Breath of the Wild is a massive game. You've got 120 shrines, you've got 900 Korok seeds to find, you've got a big open world, kind of like Skyrim, and you've got so many other features in this game that the scope is massive compared to plenty of other open world games. So, that being said, the nature of Breath of the Wild leads me to believe that we won't even hear about this game until 2021. Maybe that's when it'll get released, who knows. But I just think it was a weird time to announce a sequel only two years after the game came out, after Breath of the Wild has been out. The timing is just awkward, but... You know, if Nintendo wanted to reveal it now, I'm sure they had a good reason to. So, at least we have something to look forward to in the very, very distant future. With all of that being said, let's take a look back at that receipt that I mentioned at the start of the video. So, with all of these games priced at $60 each, our total comes to $600. If you throw in the sales tax for where I live, that's an additional $37.50, which makes our total $637.50 if I wanted every single game. That's not including, you know, expansion, no, not expansion, uh, deluxe packs or pre-order bonuses, because, I mean, Astral Chain has a special edition, which I'm tempted to get, 
but it's a completely new game and a new IP as far as I'm concerned, so I don't really want to commit that much to it when I don't really know much about the game. And I also put a pre-order up there for Breath of the Wild 2 for when it inevitably happens. So, hope you enjoyed this E3 video. Let me know if you want to see more content like this. Sorry it was only just me. I couldn't find anybody to do a collaboration with, but I'm satisfied with the format that I chose for this video and the way I made it a little bit different. But if you didn't like it, press the dislike button, but if you did like it, press the like button because that's why those buttons are there. And if you have feedback, just leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to read them. I'll see you guys sometime, probably this week.